Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and we are discussing again my favorite team in the New York Rangers and yes, I normally am not geared up like this, but the opportunity presented itself. I was digging through my closet the other day, found this outfit that is originally my dad's and it fits me. So I'm like, I got to wear it and I hope that you guys enjoy it. So like a retro outfit. I just, I love everything about it from the matching hat to the jacket. It's just beautiful. I can't say enough good things, but regardless, we're talking about the New York Rangers and I've had a lot of people asking me to really cover things regarding them as of late between their RFA signings with the most notable being today, which is Ryan Strom extending with the Rangers. So very interesting. Well, I should say resign, not extending, but nonetheless. So I'll be breaking down everything there is to know about the New York Rangers currently, their cap situation, how Ryan Strom and Tony D'Angelo's contracts affect the team, why it makes sense for them and what is next for them going forward with guys also like Alexander Yorian because they resign him as well and Brendan Lemieux who is yet to be resigned by the team but I'll be breaking all that stuff down so make sure you stay until the end of this video to find out all the deets and all the information regarding the New York Rangers and their latest signings. So we all knew that this was going to happen, at least to an extent, regarding the Rangers and their key RFAs. With guys like Tony D'Angelo and Ryan Strom in particular, there was an expectation that they would either be dealt or that they would be signed to a shorter term deal because the Rangers don't seem to be liking the idea of committing to them long term with the guys and the crop for both positions, really. So nonetheless, that exactly happens. Both of them are extended. Starting with Tony D'Angelo, he signs a two-year deal just a couple weeks ago now with the New York Rangers at an AAV of 4.8 mil in which he will be making 4.3 mil his first year which is the 2021 season and then in the following year his, his really his walk year possibly he'll be making upwards of 5.3 mil so a strong contract for D'Angelo and it really was in my mind at least below what his value currently is there was the expectation that D'Angelo would possibly go in anywhere between 5.5 and 6 mil but between the flat cap and really having the willingness to want to stay in New York which I think had a heavy factor into things that ends up leaving Tony D'Angelo to stay with the Rangers. And look, regardless of how you feel about these players too, I just want to throw that out there between everything going on right now and social media and, you know, currently what's happening in the U.S., Leave that separate, okay? I just want to make that clear quick regarding these players, especially. So if you have something to say outside of hockey related, do yourself a favor and don't comment it. If you do, I'm strictly going to block you right away. We're not doing that stuff on the channel. Anything outside of hockey is not what I roll with, so I don't tolerate that. So I'm just warning you guys right now, don't even bother trying to comment anything that is going to rub either myself or other people the wrong way when it's not relating to the hockey world. I'm not, I'm not here for it. So again, D'Angelo though, a really strong contract for him below market value makes a lot of sense for the Rangers. And I'll expand on that more in a second, but then we have Ryan Strom who signs with them today as well. And Stromer, we knew that there was pretty much a 50, 50 chance of him possibly being dealt this off season. And with that 50, 50 seeming more likely as they reached their arbitration hearing, which was today, they just made the signing happen right before the hearing did. So they lock in on a two year deal with Strom as well. And there was an idea that maybe he would go for a two year deal, but no, he signs, I mean, a one year deal, but no, he signs a two-year deal with the team at an AAV of 4.5 mil when he was asking arbitration, I believe 5.7, and then the Rangers were asking for, I think it was 3.5. So they really came down the middle here and it makes a lot of sense for both the Rangers and Strom because look, anyone that thought Strom was going to be gaining upwards of 5.7 mil, I have a bridge to sell you. That This is how arbitration works. He was in a similar boat to what Kreider was doing back with his time of going to arbitration a couple years ago. I think it was back in 2016. But nonetheless, Strom, the idea was, okay, he'd probably be making anywhere between maybe five or stretching 5.5 mil, given his market value. But between the flat cap and the Rangers simply not having the money to afford it, he lands with the Rangers on a deal that he's only going to be making four mil his first year and then five mil his second year, which is his walk year. Makes a lot of sense for the Rangers. They have little to no cap space now, and I'll expand on that in a second. But Ryan Strom coming off of, off of a career year, same thing, obviously, with D'Angelo. Strom, of course, having a 59-point season this past year, playing alongside Artemi Panarin on that second line. And then Tony D'Angelo having a career year with 53 points as well as one of the best puck-moving defensemen in all the NHL right now. And that's an actual fact. His defensive game, both of their defensive games may be lacking, but the point production has definitely been there. It is valu valuable for this Ranger team at this point in time. So it made a lot of sense with both of these re-signings, but let's get into it a little bit more as to exactly how it affects the Rangers going forward. 
Because when we look at the Rangers cap situation right now, they're in somewhat of a tricky spot. Because if you look right over here, we're going to have it. They have just around 4 mil in cap space, um, realistically speaking. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not 4 mil, pardon me. I mean that on paper, at least for cap friendly, they have 6.379 mil. But with the cap, um, the bonus cut cushion penalty, they really only have around 2.429 mil that they're working with. So take that into, into account. I would put that in the equation regarding that so nonetheless the rangers are in a tight bind right now they have not even 2.5 mil realistically in cap space and they still have to re-sign brendan lemieux who they are set to go to arbitration right now we'll see if it happens i think they're going to land around a two-year deal at an aav of 1.5 mil with the first year being one mil and the second year being two we'll see what happens there because i know that lemieux was asking for two mil in arbitration i think the rangers were going for one so they'll probably meet right down the middle if you ask me which makes a lot of sense but regardless the rangers don't have much cap space now going forward and when you look at their current spot with having d'angelo He's being paid a good amount of money below his market value still, in my opinion. And I think most would agree, especially if he was a UFA, forget it. I don't think he would be with the Rangers right now. But nonetheless, he'll probably be in that top four for the Rangers starting next season on that left side, which is what he was most accustomed to playing during his time in juniors. When he hit the NHL levels, really where his game transitioned into being on that right side. But D'Angelo, if you're paying him that kind of money at 4.8 mil AEV with his walk year being 5.3, you'd have to think he's probably going to be gaining a lot of significant play time in that top four possibly alongside Jacob Truba which would be an interesting pairing I'm not necessarily sure how I feel about it but I'm hoping for the best so expect Tony D'Angelo to be toyed with on the left side either permanently next season or at parts at least to see if it'll work so to be continued but gain on a Ryan Strom which is probably why you clicked on this video regarding his signing today uh there was a lot of debates as to if he would be dealt or not uh Jeff Gorin came out right after the draft really and openly said Vince McCurgliano is one of the uh main beat writers for the Rangers great guy make sure to check out his stuff if you haven't in his podcast um but regardless Jeff Gordon stated to him among others that yes they were in fact trying to shop uh Strom and get a feel for the market for him regarding to his trade value but nothing really reached where they were considering to point where hey we can make this deal happen so they end up sticking with strom it makes sense strom is a guy who's having career numbers during his time with the new york rangers he was originally drafted back in the first round uh, back in 2011 by the new york islanders he plays center can play the right wing too but he's known for being a center with the rangers at this point in time and again had 59 points this past year including 18 goals and 41 assists and the year prior in his debut season with the rangers after being dealt for ryan spooner what a trade that is spooner isn't even in the nhl anymore had 33 points in 63 games so strong numbers there and then when you get on to d'angelo too he had 15 goals and 38 um assists for 53 points and had 30 game 30 points in 61 games last season for the rangers so very reminiscent it's funny because these guys are close friends and their stats are awfully similar to each other while being different positions and during their total points as well for the rangers they aren't far off either so i i do find that interesting it, it is kind of bizarre but nonetheless when it comes to both these guys they are going to have a great impact on the rangers next season and if you look at strom as well yes i know his defensive game is lacking but to give the argument that say this contract is definitely not worth what his play is for the point of S strom not being worth as much of this money i would honestly disagree because from a market standpoint, he was worth more than 4.5 mil AAV, let alone making only 4 mil in his first year. He's worth more than that if we're basing things off of the market. When it comes to his actual play, analytically speaking, yes, the defensive numbers just simply aren't there. But not that that wasn't the case with most guys in this Rangers lineup this past year that was so offensively minded, really obviously still in this rebuild slash retool and they're working on their defensive game. I expect Strom to get better in that route. And look, he's had the best numbers of his career really being a late bloomer with the New York Rangers. This was the best season to date that he had since really, I believe, his freshman or sophomore season with the Islanders in which he had 50 points so take that into account and d'angelo by far has been playing the best hockey of his career with the new york rangers wasn't the case when he was originally drafted back in 2014 in the first round by the Tampa bay lightning that was traded he didn't even play a regular season game with them i don't believe he was then traded to the arizona coyotes part of that Derek step on trade we know the deal there he has had a very strong start to his career with the New York Rangers. And it, he and this is great for them when it comes to this two-year deal because a couple of things lie. The Rangers aren't committed to either of them long-term with 
D'Angelo's um, situation, still having Niels Lundqvist and other defensemen coming up sooner rather than later for the Rangers on the defensive front because they have great defensive prospects. I've touched on that in previous videos. They don't have to commit to Tony long term. He will be susceptible to trades over these next uh, over the next two years, really. That will always be a hot topic re regarding him during his tenure with the Rangers until he, say, signs long term, which I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't think so at this point in time, but I obviously could be wrong. So um, Tony will be susceptible to that and... He, who knows what can happen with him? I really think that the Rangers are going to find the best out of him over these next year or two, which could dictate if they commit to him long term. If he works on his defensive game more, if the numbers continue to trend up and he becomes a consistent puck moving defenseman that is one of the best in the NHL, then the Rangers are going to feel hard pressed to get rid of him unless a perfect trade really presents itself over these next two years. But gain on to Ryan Strom, who's a guy where Strom had great numbers, but a lot of people believe it was definitely part with having uh, Panarin all on his left side. Panarin, best Ranger currently. Uh, fantastic. Literally the guy on the wall behind me. Arguably the best free agent signing the Rangers have had in their history. 90 plus points. Hart Trophy finalist. Yeah. Panarin's a beast. Bread man. We know this. But Strom did get plenty of point production without Panarin along his side this year. At least statistically speaking, with having Panarin involved versus not involved, Strom still did put up some points. Obviously, Panarin has definitely been a huge help to him, and they looked like they have clicked. But the argument has been, okay, if Strom can play this well, why can't, say, a centerman for cheaper, say, via free agency, oh, the Derek Brassards of the world, love Brass, right? Or even Eric Hall come in as a filler for, say, one or two years, and he they could arguably put up similar if not better points than Strom during that tenure uh I would argue that regarding Broussard especially I would love to see him back in the Ranger blue and the bottom six not the top six uh, I think I think Brass is we all know he's his prime he's on the wrong side of 30 array uh Eric Hall has been injury prone I would love to take a flyer on him in that bottom six but who knows these are guys that really you're banking on a lot it's a low risk high reward situation but if they aren't committed to Philip Petal as a 2c which I surely am I would love to see him in the top six but they're not doing that yet at least they're going to keep continue playing him on that third line maybe get some top six minutes on the win who knows but probably not at this point in time but regardless strom is a guy where he's young he has youth on his side he's 27 years of age d'angelo's 25 so these are guys that are controllable young and still have plenty to give at the nhl level whereas brassard and Halla among others are kind of stretching it a little bit and the rangers aren't going to be going after say any guys um bigger names whether it's mikhail granolin who has really been marketed as a winner over a centerman currently from all the reports i've seen so i wouldn't bank on granolin i don't i wouldn't bank on the rangers doing anything for agency wise for the remainder of the year and i think that the idea of possibly having some bigger uh, trades happening with Strom or D'Angelo, which was rumored, and I was under the belief for a bit that Strom could really be dealt as part of a bigger deal. It doesn't seem likely at this point in time, so I will honestly eat my words on that. And look, does this mean that just because Strom is resigned that he won't be traded? Of course it doesn't mean that. He could still be traded before the season starts. Do I think that'll happen? No, I don't think that'll happen. I think the Rangers are committing to him for at least another year, or at least till the trade deadline. But nonetheless... He is in a strong spot for the Rangers to prove himself and see if he can be consistent. If Strom can have another year for the Rangers at around 60 plus points, possibly even 70, okay, then the Rangers have themselves a bargain contract for a 2C that has proven himself when multiple seasons of around 60 plus points. But if he does have a down year next year with even Alexi Lafreniere in the mix and these youngsters like Capo Caco, Adam Fox, Julian Gauthier, Philip Hedl getting better, then that's something to worry about. And then you're like, wow, maybe we didn't execute on training him while his value is at its highest. So there are things to consider. There are some risks involved, but for the most part, these are strong deals, definitely below market value that make perfect sense for the Rangers in this cap crunch. So don't expect them to do anything crazy for the remainder of the offseason. I, I think that's a has-been at this point in time. Uh, could they do, say, a salary dump for a Brendan Smith? Sure, but Again, it does kind of feel like it's stretching it right now, but we'll see. They did dump Mark Stahl, which no one expected. I surely didn't, so who knows? Jeff Gorin has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and he normally keeps it pretty hush-hush, closed indoors before something actually comes to fruition. So take these things into account. But when you look at this Rangers defense right now, as it is, you're going to have Adam Fox, Ryan Lindgren, beautiful pairing. Such a great rookie pairing from last season that's only going to get better. Then you have Jacob Truba, and let's just say theoretically, Tony D'Angelo on the left side of that pairing. Okay, that's your top four. Great, solid. 
not fantastic defensively, but a lot of offensive power and hoping these guys get better because they do have youth on their side for developing their, their overall defensive game. Then you get to that third pairing. Then you have Brennan Smith and Jack Johnson. I don't like that. I know you don't like that. So what can the Rangers do for next year? I've touched on this in previous videos. Tarmo Roninen, one of the more coveted prospects for the Rangers, a more underappreciated one, if you will, uh, finished defenseman, is going to have a strong shot to make the Rangers lineup on that left side defense for the bottom pair next season. I believe he has a stronger shot of making it than Keandre Miller because of Miller's uh, bonuses and maybe not just being ready for the angel level. I think Miller will have a cup of coffee next season, but really nothing more than that unless he truly blows them away in camp. So keep these things in mind. Tarmo Roninen, watch out for him. Anthony Potato is a fringe NHL defenseman. Really, analytics are not on his side either. He signed with the Rangers as well. Another depth defenseman who grew up a Rangers fan. I believe he's from New York. That's a cool story. I like that. But nonetheless... It only means so much. Anthony Potato will probably be a seventh defenseman for the Rangers, uh, all things considered. There was that rumor with Sammy Votton that I covered in the past that Mike Johnson from NHL Network threw out there. Probably isn't going to happen, but it was a fun discussion nonetheless and does make you think, is there something there? Probably not, but is another thing to consider. And then when you look at the Rangers' center depth right now, you have Mika Zbanjad, you have Ryan Strom. You're going to have, pardon me, you have Mika Zbanjad, Ryan Strom, Philip Heedle, and then you're going to have Brett Howden and Kevin Rooney might be slotted in there. Who knows? But the Rangers are in a very interesting spot where they need to see what these guys are going to do consistently over this next year or two. It's a lot of prove-it time for the Tony D'Angelo's, the Ryan Strums, the Philip Heedles even to an extent, and Julian Gauthier. I think Heedle might be stretching a little bit just because if they're going to keep him in a bottom six role, then you're not necessarily going to get a crazy amount of production out of him. I expect him to take a jump next year, but still, if he's going to be limited his opportunities, you can't put too much blame on him at the end of the day. And Julian Gauthier, the Rangers don't know what they really have in him yet. He's done everything at every other level. He's been dominant in the AHL, former first round draft pick, I believe back in 2016, Play part of that Joey Keane trade back at the trade deadline. A lot to prove with him. I really like his skill set, six foot four, big frame, really fast as well, strong hands. Let's see if he can put it together as an NHL regular next season. Excited for him, but these are a lot of guys with a lot of question marks. And then you have other guys too to see if they're going to advance their game at all or if they really hit their peak. And Pavel Buchnevich, who's still young, Capo Kako is just getting his feet wet. A lot can be expected with him. And now you bring Alexi Lafreniere in the mix, and this offense and overall team gets that much better. The Rangers are going to be so fun to watch. I can't wait to cover them more in the future as a Rangers fan. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. How do you feel about the Ryan Strom sign, the D'Angelo signing, uh, Yuriev signing? Even I thought that was fine at an AV of 2.45 mil if my memory serves me correct. So I think that was perfectly fine on them. Uh, he would definitely be making more money AAV if he was, say, a UFA or hit the market. Regardless, I think that that was a perfect signing for them. Another two-year deal. Not committing anything long-term for these RFAs. You can't go wrong. Yes, they may be susceptible to things, and maybe Ryan Strom will be toyed with as uh, these, the expansion happens in two years. Who knows? I think that might be stretching because if I'm the Rangers, I don't want to lose Ryan Strom to the, C, uh, the Seattle Kraken uh, when I could have traded him. That that would be my biggest worry but if say a trade isn't presenting itself he's declining he has a quick peak whatever it may be and that they don't want to deal with that cap it that's a possibility too so take these things into account ryan strom he could be susceptible after next season to go to seattle but to be determined we will see what happens there but let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys ranger fans first of all do you like the outfit i like this outfit but i want to know your thoughts if you think it's cool or not if you don't hey that's fine i don't care but regardless let me know your thoughts on the rangers currently ryan strom tony d'angelo we're talking about hockey nothing else don't give me that bs please um and yuriev lemieux do you think lemieux will sign sooner than later what's the questions regarding there and anything else you have basically questions regarding the rangers that you want me to answer or anything like that please let me know in the comments i would love to hear it thank you all so much for 2000 subscribers guys it means an absolute ton this has been such a fun ride and gain the love and appreciation that i've been having not just on my channel overall but talking about my favorite team the rangers specifically is pretty darn cool so seriously thank you all so much hit those buttons hit like hit subscribe check out previous videos i just did a video breaking down the all the centers top 10 prospects check out my previous videos talking about the rangers top 10 prospects and talking about the rangers future as a whole with stat boy steven and the prospect video was with gravity nathan gravity make sure to check out his channel as well but a lot of great content on the channel a lot of great content going forward here with a lot more collabs with fellow great youtubers so be on the lookout for all this stuff guys but thank you again so much let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always and i'll be back real soon